Hey VC, it's Eric. I'm back with a, another haul of vinyl. I'm going to talk about a couple CDs and some stuff. But, starting it off, we got some soundtracks from Enigma Records. So Enigma is a label that I have highlighted before, stuff I collect. I really I like that they use their record sleeve to advertise their products. Kind of some cool graphics there. But they put their catalog on the back. Pretty cool. I like, uh, I like how they use that space there for that. So this is the soundtrack for a film called Under the Boardwalk, which was from the late 80s and is kind of a teen surf film that's got a lot of kind of meta commentary in it. I'm a big fan. It's not for everyone, but, you know, it's 93 minutes, 100 minutes. It's fun, silliness. Um, on this is The Untouchables doing Under the Boardwalk. You've got the surf punks, surf MCs, the Dell Lords, the Smithereens, uh, Wednesday Week, and, of course, the Drifters doing the original or an... You know, they were the one of the bands that did the big version of the song Under the Boardwalk. Now, if you want to see the film, it's actually out on this double disc with Tough Turf. Tough Turf is interesting because it's got, uh, as you can see, Ultron's right there. And kind of in the background, I think that's supposed to be um, Iron Man. And uh, one of these, these ladies, or I guess that lady there, was in one of those uh, housewife shows, and this has actually got live performances by Jim Carroll and the Jim Carroll Band. So this is like a solid disc of cool 80s stuff, in my opinion. Uh, you want to see the Surf Punks play live, by the way? They are uh, featured in Under the Boardwalk. And I do have the CD of that album. Um, so the uh, next, before I show the next one, uh, that was a sealed copy, and... Uh, so, of course, it had all the inserts and everything in pristine condition, but I bought another soundtrack from uh, Enigma Records that wasn't sealed, but it still had these ads inside of it. I kind of wish I could order one of those Enigma sweatshirts. You know, back in 1985 or 86 or whenever this came out, there's no way I would have been able to afford that. But today, you know, I would have sent my check off immediately. Check out that Enigma variation shirt. Love to have one of those. So, as I showed, the the sleeve of the uh, Under the Boardwalk soundtrack had the catalog. They used to also put print uh, these kinds of flyers and stick them in there. It's cool to find this stuff. I actually have a uh, Restless Records, Enigma Records catalog from 86 that I'll maybe show at some point. So the other soundtrack I did get was Dangerously Close, which on this soundtrack is Smithereens, uh, Green and Red, TSOL, Lords of the New Church. Uh, so some good stuff. This was an interesting 80s teen flick. Uh, I have the Blu-ray. It's over there. I'm not going to dig it out. Um, not, not you know, not a film that's going to set the world on fire, but it captures a moment in time. And you might recognize some of the people on the cover there. That's Carrie Lowell, who was on one of those Law & Order shows, but she was also in the first of the Timothy Dalton James Bond flicks. And on top there, that's, um, what's his name? John Stockwell, who was in My Science Project, and Christine, and these days, directs films. So, it, it's one of those teen films that if you grew up in the 80s, it's worth taking a look at because it deals with a lot of class issues and uh, right now in the news there's a lot of stuff about uh, authority and control and it really deals with those questions because it's about a kid who's from a middle class, working class neighborhood who goes to a fancy school and there's a group at the school called the Sentinels who are basically like police and they kind of take it too far. Here's the record, by the way. So, next up, something I never ever thought I would ever own. This is another soundtrack. This one's on Columbia Records. And this is the soundtrack for Porky's Revenge. Now, you're asking yourself, why would you buy the soundtrack for Porky's Revenge? Take a look who's on this. Uh, Dave Edmonds, Dave Edmonds, Jeff Beck, George Harrison, uh, Carl Perkins, Clarence Cl Clemens, Willie Nelson, uh, all of these guys doing like classic 50 style rock and roll songs, you know, covers of Love Me Tender, there's, you know, Stagger Lee, there's Dave Edmonds doing a whole host of 50s stuff. That's Jeff Beck doing Sleepwalk, which is the Santo and Johnny song. So this is kind of a cool soundtrack, and I found it for like five bucks. So I was like, sure. I noticed, I know that this has become a cult soundtrack in many circles, and that it was reissued on CD, but. Lucky to find the LP. So moving on to new stuff. So this is a new LP from Alice Bag. This is her first solo record. She was in the Bags in the Alice Bag band. She was part of the original Los Angeles punk scene. 
she, uh, you know, very much carried the torch for Mexican Americans as part of that scene. Apparently, she's uh, been a school teacher for years and years and years, and uh, just just a really interesting person. This record sounds a lot like uh, '60s girl groups, that kind of stuff. Um, I like it. I know some people have mentioned they find it to be maybe a little uh, a little forced, but overall, I think it's a solid record, and I'm glad to see people like Alice Bag getting their due. Uh, side note: the bags. Who else was in the bags? Patricia Morrison, who was in The Damned, she was in Legal Weapon, she was in The Gun Club, and she was in Sisters of Mercy. So, uh, probably one, you know, one of the greats out there who, I think she has a solo album, I've never heard it, but, uh, you know, Alice and Patricia, who I met once, and she was super nice, Patricia, that is. So, you know, please, if you, this sounds at all like anything you're interested in, it's up on Spotify, you can check it out. And go out and support. She's going to be on tour. And even if the studio version of this doesn't sound super great to your ears, who knows? Maybe live, she'll be amazing. Okay. So, this is a band, The Hookers, from Kentucky that I really like this album. I like some of their other stuff, but this album especially. Saw them live on that tour. Their guitar player is in a band with a female-fronted heavy metal band called... Savage Master, and I've been meaning to pick up some other stuff for a while. I think it was Harmless Rebel that showed this uh, this band in one of his recent videos, and uh, so I decided, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get, get their two records. So this is the record, Mask of the Devil, and here's the LP, which came on yellow vinyl. I'm not really a huge collector of colored vinyl, but colored vinyl can be kind of fun. Here is the other one, and my hand keeps getting in the way. Anyway, this is Whips and Chains. Great stuff, great 80s style driving metal with kind of a punky edge. And let me show this, this came on yellow vinyl. So, uh, another new album. This is the Dagons, which are kind of droney dream pop, uh, definitely with a rock, indie rock kind of sound. I'm a fan of theirs. Uh, I've liked some of their albums. I have some of their CDs, and this is their album that came out recently. It's really good. I've been listening to it on CD in my car, and it's just real dreamy, real lush. Uh, it's still kind of uh, haunting, and good stuff, good stuff. This is a band that I had ordered this directly from them. You know, so I got a sticker and a postcard along with it. The album's just on black vinyl, so I don't think I'm going to need to show that. But good stuff. If you're looking for something different and new, you know, hit their stuff up on Bandcamp and give it a listen. So, this is the new Johnny Moped record. Johnny Moped was part of the 70s pub rock scene in the UK, which is the scene that directly preceded punk rock. This is the scene that Nick Lowe came out of in Dr. Feelgood. This is a straight-up rock record. I've been enjoying listening to this on Spotify, so it's there if you want to check it out. Uh, just just good straight-ahead rock and roll, and it's nice that, you know, guys from the 70s are still out there making great music. And this came on green vinyl. All right. Now for maybe the weirdest record I'm going to show, and what I'm calling at this point my record of the year. Uh, I have yet to find anything that beats this. This is Shooter Jennings. Kuntosh for Giorgio. Yes, that is the son of outlaw country legend Waylon Jennings doing a tribute album to Giorgio Moroder. So it's a mixture of outlaw country and Italian 80s disco synth wave. And yeah, you might recognize some of those images on the cover. That's a flash dance reference, and there's the uh, the dragon thing from the Never Ended Story. And that's because Never Ended Story is covered on this soundtrack, along with Cat People with vocals from Marilyn Manson. But there's more than that. There's a lot of great stuff on here. Totally hooky, totally listenable. Sounds like the worst idea in the world, right? Outlaw Country and synth disco from, you know, Italian style or Swiss style. Check it out. Just, just, just give it a listen. Give it one listen. See if it works for you or not. At least one or two of these songs are going to hook you. And that came... On this lovely pink vinyl. Okay, setting these down real quick. And I'm back. Talk about some compact discs. So, 
sometimes things aren't available in vinyl or they're just plain more affordable on disc. So Super Heroines, early 80s, death rock from LA. So this was kind of gothy, but comes out of the punk scene. They were on the Hell Comes to Your House compilation. Um, I'd only heard the song, their songs on that, and I saw that this was available, and I figured I'd check it out. So far, so good. You know, if you're in the mood for that kind of gothy death rock, definitely check them out. Next up, got this for a dollar at a library sale. This is Faster Pussycat, one of those hair metal bands that weren't really all that hair metal. Listening to this now, I hear a lot of Red Hot Chili Peppers before they sucked, and a lot of a Mother Love Bone in their sound. So it's pretty good stuff. Not all of it's a winner, but for a dollar, hell, why not check it out? And you gotta love that cover. It folds out into a poster that's got a very, very uh, faster pussycat kill kill look, which obviously is what they're going for. Um, this is Ray Willie Hubbard, the, the Grifter Hemnal. This is a, a contemporary artist who is more of a outlaw country blues rock and roll kind of guy. I haven't dug into this album too much, but I've been meaning to pick it up for a long time. And uh, so I did. I like it so far. So if you're looking for something that is a modern analog to what Waylon and Willie and those guys were doing back in the day, you should check out Ray Willie Hubbard. Okay. Brand new thing. I actually scored a promo copy of the new Lydia Loveless. I also have the vinyl on pre-order. I've listened to it once. It's good. Uh, it's a little more rock and roll than her previous stuff, so she's edging more towards mainstream rock sounds, which is fine with me. Great art, great young artist. If you're looking for straight-up rock and roll, you're looking for something that's more alt-country, definitely check out her previous records and look out for that new one. And then finally, for this score, um, another soundtrack. Matter of Degrees, the original motion picture soundtrack. What is on this? Fire Hose. Giant Sand, Eleventh Day Dream, Miracle Legion, Yola Tango, Pixies, Lemonheads, uh, Alex Chilton, Schooly D, Nova Mob, Miracle Legion again, Uncle Tupelo, Throwing Muses. This was a late 80s, early 90s film about a kid who works at a radio station on a college campus in, I want to say Maryland, Baltimore, uh, Providence, somewhere on the East Coast. And he's fighting with the idea that he's going to be going to law school. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen the film. I really would like to see it again, but I wanted to revisit this soundtrack. So if you happen across the VHS of this for cheap, pick it up, check it out. If you happen to see the soundtrack somewhere, take a look at the track list and see if that is something that you would be into. All right, and finally, the little extra something. So you might have heard in the news that Sandy Perlman passed away, best known for working with Blue Oyster Cult, uh, producing albums by The Clash. He also produced these two records by the dictators. Um, it's Blood Brothers. Let me get my, see if I can get my hand out of the way so you can see the, the name. Well, there's Go Girl Crazy, and there's Blood Brothers. Dictators, very Ramones-like, very, very rock and roll 1970s. If you are into that scene, if you like the punk, you should check these records out. And I'm not doing a good job of showing them. But at any rate, rest in peace, Sandy Perlman. Uh, if you guys like the video, hit the like button, subscribe if this stuff is uh, working for you, uh, tell me what you think, uh, comments please, I uh, appreciate everybody's comments that have been coming in, and I appreciate the subscriptions. So, it's Eric, and I'll catch you all next time.